King Damon and today I'm going to be showing you a unboxing. Now it's not really an unboxing because this is a used game. I'm sorry about the if you hear more echo than usual because I usually have the mic kind of closer to me. But this game is actually kind of a bigger size game as you can tell from the shape. But anyway that's nonetheless. I want to show you this one because I always like to show you guys some new possible dice cast episodes. So without further ado this game is from my childhood and I had to get it. It is Pokemon Master Trainer. Now this game I love. When I first got it as a kid, it was actually a quite surprising gift that my parents got me without me even knowing about it. So in that sense, it was good. Although they did make me get rid of it after all because they quote unquote, I wasn't playing it even though no one really did, but let's not get into that. So let's take a look at this. Now, if anyone knows about this game, it is challenging. It is actually quite challenging but extremely fun in my opinion. So just like looking at the board alone, like you can see how massive this thing is. I like guess there are bigger board games, but it's just, it's just, you gotta imagine you start from here. So this is Palatown, Virginia, uh, Viridian, I almost said Virginia or Virgin, whatever. <laughs> Viridian City, like it's the entire, like, if you look at the map on the Pokemon game, it is the entire thing. Except for Cinnabar Island is obviously, I feel, slightly bigger than that. But still, it's... It is basically the game. And there is a lot of heat that this game sometimes get where, like, people say it's not that great. But from my memories as a kid, I did enjoy it. There were a few times I got to play it with people. And it was quite fun. And I just, when I saw it was available, someone had it in pretty good condition, I was like, oh hell, I am buying this. Yes, how fast can I? So let's take a look at now some of the pieces, because that, that board alone is great. I'm going to try and remember as much again. So I already organized the board a little bit, because it was really good. The, late, the person who sent it to me did keep it good, but she kept all the stuff in bags, so I just kind of put it in my own way. So as you can see here, because this game is fairly known, so I don't need to really hide it. I hope you can see it from that distance, but you have the different kind of basic gym leader. So I'm going to try and match this up. So when you get to... Indigo Plateau, which is the center bit, you're, there's a chance you're going to face one of these trainers or one of these people. So it's all the people that you would expect. So, uh, Lore Lorelli, I can't remember their names. I know Gary, that one's easy. Lance, Bruno, and Agatha. So that's the people you're going to play. And, and from the looks of things, it looks like, it looks like Gary's obviously the hardest. Because I think she was the first one you fight, then him. Then Agatha, then Lance, obviously, and then Gary. And it's just, it's great. I have to, like, it's its really just fucking awesome. Now, here's a starter Pokemon. This is the meat of it. So, again, I don't know if you can see that. Squirtle, Charmander, Clefairy, I know, Meowth, I know, Pikachu, and Bulbasaur. My only complaint about this is I don't know if I would have chosen Meowth or Clefairy. Clefairy is the one that really stands up. Meowth makes sense because it's Team Rockets. But I guess they didn't want to decide between Ghastly and Ekans. So they just kind of said, fuck it. Clefairy. I would have gone with like... I think I would have gone instead of Meowth and Clefairy. Would have gone with Caterpie maybe. Or... Maybe even Pidgey. Because yeah, I mean, they wanted to make it so that... In the oh, where's the where's that side? In the green, let's see here. In the pink area, I guess they wanted to make it so like you get the standard, you know, the ones you would normally get, and that sort of spot. But still, I don't know. I just I found I always found even as a kid, I'm like, Clefairy and Meow. That's a that's an unusual choice there, but still good. I don't hate it. But it's obvious that the let's see here. So Clefairy and Meowth are pretty well even. They're both at 3 and 3. Charmander is 5 and 4. Squirtle is 5 and 4. Bulbasaur is 4 and 4. Not even in this game does Bulbasaur get a break <laughs> from being basically known as the least. Now here's an interesting one. Pikachu is 3 and 3. So that's a little weird because I'm just thinking like... He's easily... Like they have basically 3 of them that are 3 and 3. 2 of them that are 5 and 4. And then there's one that's four and four. You're basically making that people are definitely going to go for the first starters. Because, well, yeah. Now to move on. 
This is actually kind of, the reason I'm going to be a little longer in this video than most is because of the fact that there are a few of these swinging around and I just want to show you the game because they're expensive. Like mine was a hundred bucks. I'm not going to lie. Like that's expensive, but it's in very good condition. There's some people who have it for more than a hundred, some 300, 300 being in pristine condition. But point is the average you'll find is a hundred bucks. I don't want you guys to throw away your money for nothing. I'm willing to do it because I know I like this game. But just to show you. Anyway, so now you have the six characters. So you have pink, yellow, orange, green, brown, and blue. I know what you're thinking. They have blue, but they don't have red. They should have... Me personally, this is where another thing. Like, I, I'm, I'm curious about why these coloring. I don't know why not red, but orange, I guess. But anyway, point is, is and you'll notice that they're all Ash Ketchum. Now, I get the reasoning behind that. Is because you are playing Ash. You're playing to see how if you could do any better than him on his adventure sort of thing, you know? That being said, it is still a little sad. Because, yes, you do fight Gary in it. But it still would have been kind of cool to be one of you guys is uh, Ash. One of you is Gary, Misty, Brock. Um, who are some other people, rivals? There's, there's, I'm, I'm blanking out on the other two. Hell, you could have even had one as Jesse and James, for fuck's sakes. You know what I mean? Like, it would have been interesting. But, again, I get why they're doing Ash. They're trying to say, who's the better Ash? So now we're going to move on to the other ones. So I think, if I recall from the rules, I'm trying to remember this. Yeah, so pink is the first area, and that's, again, basically Palatine of Ridding City and Pewter City. So that one has, I think it has the second most Pokemon you can get. So like Vulpix, Shelter, Weedle, Caterpie. Kind of what you expect from those three areas. And I think there was, was there one that's kind of, a, no, 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 that's fair. Actually, which area? Yeah, Celadon City should have more water Pokemon, I think. is it Like, for example... I'm pretty, it just seems a little weird that there's a lot of, like, Abra, if I remember, and Sancho are more in that area, like, in the green area. Celadon City and Cerulean City and Saffron City. I'm saying cities a lot. But still, it, it's pretty accurate to the game, I'd say, from what you can actually get them. I could be wrong about where they're from. Now, the green has the most of all the Pokemon. So you got about 41 green. So you have stuff like Tentacruel, Growlithe. So some of the second evolutions of Pokemon, some first. So Wigglytuff, Metapod, Magneton, Sandslash, Pidgeotto. So again, they don't stick exactly. I can kind of see why. Because it's supposed to be like pink is supposed to be the starter guys. And then green is supposed to be their next evolution. So it does make sense in that aspect. Now then it's the blue area, which is Vermilion City, Fuchsia. Oh no, Fuchsia City I think is blue and red. Anyway. Uh, mostly, we can see here, it's, I gotta keep getting the board so you guys get an idea. So blue is mostly covering this area from, uh, looks like it starts from Saffron City South and Lavender Town South, going through Vermilion City to Fuchsia City. So it has the, about 38 blue. So again, it's War Turtle, Ivysaur, Primeape. Needle King. Again, there's some, so there's some third and second evolutions we'll see in this one. And then there's some rarer ones like Dratini. Then there's Jolteon and stuff like that. Him on Lee, him on Chan, I think, are in this one. So, last but not least is the red. So that's Cel a bit of Celadon City West. <laughs> um, a bit of Fusion City South. And then, of course, Cinnabar Island. So basically, if each of... Uh, now... Oh yeah, I should probably show up that first before I forget. So that's... And then for the red part, is tw only 26. So that's like... Dugon, Omastar, Gengar, Kabutops, Machamp, Executor, Charizard. May I say one thing? Exutar becoming basically a dragon Pokemon. When I first heard about that in a newer Pokemon, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> So that was a little throw off for me. Anyway, back to this. Now, if you notice, there's this little place, which is the Unknown Dungeon Pokemon. So you can probably guess who those are. Those are like Mewtwo, Articuno, Moltres, and Zapdos. Now, for the three birds, they keep them relatively the same strength. Eight and nine, eight and nine, eight and nine. Now, you're wondering what I mean by the eight. 
and nine. So eight, the upper number is their health. The lower is, I think if I remember, it's either how much damage, that's, yeah, that's how much damage they can do, but they have to get a certain dice number to get that, to hit. I believe that's how it is. Like, it's like, they gotta get a six to hit that. Now, oh, actually it says right here. So, attack, yeah, attack strength and everything, and then dice roll needed to catch them. Oh, no, that's the dice roll needed to catch them. So the six is how, that's right. It's how much you need to catch them. So you have to get a six to catch these guys. So they will probably fuck your shit up before you get a chance to catch them, but it's still fu fucking fun. Now to move on to the cards, there are item cards. So there's stuff like Great Ball, Master Ball, and it says how much you have to get, like add a, so for Ultra Ball, it's add a one or two to your roll and stuff like that. Now I got the bilingual one. So I got like the, it's, this was probably the Canadian release board. Which makes sense because I bought from someone who is from Canada. Now moving to the event cards. So these are like Pokemon Center. Revive any one of your Pokemon knocked out. Trade Pokemon. So you can trade a Pokemon with another player's starter Pokemon cannot be traded. So that's good. So if you won that. So you roll basically the ghost decide who goes first. Kind of think of it like in the actual game where. Well in that case Professor Oak lets you go first. And then the other guy tries to choose after that. Now I can't remember elements. So a factor I imagine they do, which may be why Pikachu has a lower attack, but I don't know. But the elements, I believe, still do apply to the game. And then there's cards that can boost your attack, so it's not too bad. It does, Again, it does kind of seem odd that Pikachu, who's right there, is getting one of the shittier strengths, but they probably did it to even out the game more than anything else. Now, to move on to, from what you can see from the cities, there's different things. So... Pure cities where it started Pokemon, that's, there's nothing really special about it. Vermilion City has like draw two items. Draw two items. I think it says it in French too. Yeah, that's what it is. Draw two, I'm trying to read. Cerulean City, revive one Pokemon or dice roll one to six to revive your Pokemon. So you can either just say straight up, oh, I only have one, so I don't want to do a dice roll. Or you can do one to six, which I imagine decides how many of your guys roll. Why you wouldn't do that? Because I feel like at this point, you would probably have your guys pretty messed up. So most of them are draw to cards. A couple of them were like Vermilion City are the same thing to revive. And that one's a revive. So that alone is tough. And then, oh, that alone kind of helps out the players. And then there's little ones on the side that say, catch me, catch me. Draw an event card if you land on certain spots. So it is a very well-designed board, I would say overall. A lot of people do find it is difficult to win, which, if memory serves again, yeah, it kind of is. Because it's not like in the game where you can just kind of revive all your guys at, a, at, a, at one of the Pokestops. Am I saying that? Poke... Whatever. Anyway, to see Nurse Joy. <laughs> um, you can't exactly revive all your guys. It's not that easy, so that's what makes it a little more challenging. But again, since this would take significantly less time than the actual game itself. Like, I think, although speed gamers might say no, but this can take, uh, most people find about 40 minutes to an hour. Especially if you've never played it before. So, my opinion on the game, right now it's sitting at Board Game Geek, which is a site I use a lot. Has, it has it at about 4.7, which is not, in my opinion, that bad considering their standards. Because this is a child game, right? So I find that's really good. I do find it worth it. All in all, I have to say this game is worth it. From Again, I'm basing it mostly on my childhood, but just for nostalgia alone, I get it. And a lot of people agree with me also on that site that say it actually is a game that they're proud to have their part of their collection, and so am I. Like, I definitely, when I saw that this was available, I'm like, I'm going for it. There's no doubt in my mind. So I do recommend it. Quite honestly, I do recommend this as a game. I believe you guys will have fun. If I'm wrong, I'm very sorry, but it is really a lot of fun. So I do highly recommend it. And that's just what I wanted to show off to you guys. Because again, it is a quite expensive game. So I didn't want you to waste your money for nothing. But I give it my full approval. And I say it definitely earns a 5.7, if not a 6 or 7. Because to me, it's, it's great. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, it's a lot longer than normal, but it is technically an unboxing and review. So... Expect this one to be a little longer. 
So I hope that get, uh, made you guys decide whether or not you want to go for that game you probably had either in your shopping cart or on your wish list. I definitely say go for it. Do not spend $300. I say $100 is about fair price for it. And hopefully maybe they'll make another one. They did make a sequel to this game. But the design of it is extremely different from this one. I don't know if they designed it differently to make it easier. But this one just makes me feel like I'm in the actual world of Pokemon. The other one made me kind of feel like I'm just playing a game that's Pokemon based. It's like has the theme of Pokemon but it's not actually the game. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again I hope it made you decide whether or not to buy it. If it didn't make you, if it made you not want to buy it, then I'm glad I saved you the money. But as always, like, share, subscribe, stay tuned for more. I have another game to show you guys. So see you guys in a, well, in a few moments. Bye!